Hi everyone, Martin here. I thought it would be interesting and useful to share a video of the firmware upgrade process from V1 to V2, that's the double trouble firmware release, on both the Wolfmix W1 and the ADJ WMX1 uh, lighting controllers. In this particular video, I'm using my Mark II Wolfmix W1 unit, uh, but this uh, firmware release uh, can be installed on any W1, either a Mark 1, the, uh, the first version, or the Mark 2 that I'm using here. Okay, right, first things first, there are some things that you need to know before you start the firmware upgrade process. Firstly, and most importantly, the V2 firmware is currently a beta release. Now that means it's been extensively tested within uh, Wolfmix uh, community themselves. It's been, it's been tested by beta testers like myself. I have taken it out to gigs and have used it, uh, but it is probably not bomb proof. Okay, so if you have got important gigs where you need to know that your lighting controller has your back for the entire gig, you probably don't want to install this on your one and only Wolfmix controller. Uh, that said, if you've got low risk gigs and you've got a backup for your lighting in case anything goes wrong, then uh, by all means go ahead and install this. I would encourage you to do this uh, if you uh, have got the time and capacity to actually do some tests with it before you go out on a gig because if you do that and you're comfortable that your lighting setup's working then you're going to be in a good shape a good place to actually take this out uh, to gigs but uh, but please please be aware that this is a beta release uh, and uh, yeah don't take risks uh, unless you are unless you have a backup or another solution that you can use um, out there right that said it is well worth looking at this and trying it out because there are some phenomenal features in this release. Simon uh, from Wolfmix has, Wolfmix has already shared a video of all of the new features and capabilities so I'm not going to cover that here. What I am going to do is just walk you through what the upgrade process looks like. So okay on the controller your, on your controller itself the first thing you'll need to know is that if you install the v2 firmware your controller will be fully kind of factory reset with no projects installed. So uh, you will have to reinstate all of those projects once the firmware upgrade has completed. Uh, to do that, you're gonna need to back up your projects. If you've got a current project loaded and you have an asterisk at the end of the, the title or the name of your project, that means that you haven't currently saved your current live project. So the very first thing you're gonna need to do is save your current project. In the V2 firmware, we tap the cog icon, go to projects, hit save, choose the name that you wish to save, click the save button, give it a name or, or use the name that you have previously saved it as, tap the, the tick or checkbox, wait for the project to be saved. At this point, you'll notice the asterisk at the end of your project name, your current project name has now disappeared. That means the project has been saved to the device. Okay. Uh, now the next task is to hop over into W Tools, and we need to make sure that you have backed up all of your projects to your laptop, um, and then ultimately to your Light Cloud account. So if you have just saved a project as I've just done, you're probably going to need to click the Refresh button. I'm a, I've opened W Tools here. I've gone to the Project setting. I'm going to hit Refresh to show the latest state of both my saved projects and the projects on the device, and I'm gonna click back up. This is gonna uh, show me that in this particular case, the project I've just saved on my W1 already exists on my MacBook and in my LightCloud account, and do I want to override it? And I'm gonna say, yes, I do. I'm gonna click confirm. This is going to back up my projects uh, to my laptop, and ultimately they will automatically get synced to my LightCloud account. So now, we're in a position where all the projects that are, that are on my W1 are safely stored on my laptop. So I can now go through the firmware upgrade, upgrade process, knowing that I'm not gonna lose any of my project data. I can't stress that enough. Please don't go through any firmware upgrade process until you have saved the current project on your W1, and then you have backed up all of the projects on your W1 to your laptop. Okay, 
So we're in a good place. I've now saved all of my projects are all safe and sound. I'm going to go to the settings uh, menu on the left and you'll see that I'm currently running uh, on my W1 at the moment. In fact, it's on my, if I need to go to my wolf. So uh, I'm going to, uh, nope, settings was right. My current firmware is version 1.2.5. Now, Wolfmix themselves strongly recommend that you ensure that you're running version 1.2.6 on your uh, on your device before you attempt any upgrade. So the first thing I'm going to do is download and install version 1.2.6. I'm going to click the download, hit confirm. You'll notice that my Wolfmix itself shows that it's updating firmware step one of two. I'm going to just wait for this to complete. I'm going to let this video roll in real time so that you can see approximately how long it takes. It doesn't take very long, but it is important that you go through the steps in this order. We're nearly there. Right, okay, so that was real time. The download is complete, the firmware has been uh, installed and I've now updated to 1.2.6. If I go to my settings, you'll see that my current firmware is now 1.2.6, which is the official current release. Okay, so uh, I, I can just uh, quickly check that it all looks good on here. I'm gonna have a quick look at the fixtures on here. They all look pretty good. Those were, those were the fixtures I would expect to see in this project. Uh, and if I have a look at my projects, um, I can either I can open another project, I can go and save the one that I'm currently using. Uh, so, okay. All right, so we're in pretty good shape. I'm now in a position where I can actually download uh, the beta version of uh, the firmware version 2.0.3 for W1. Uh, so here we go. Right, let's let's do this. In fact, no, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Because I've just upgraded the firmware, I'm actually gonna go to projects, hit refresh, and just make sure that there are no backups. In fact, there will be a backup because I have literally, you just see me just save that project. I'm gonna go and back this project up again. I'm, this is the one I'm gonna restore onto the device after the V2 firmware installation. So, okay. Right, go to settings. I'm now going to download V2 firmware. This is, so you'll see this warning. It says that this is a major firmware update. Be sure to back up everything. I've just been through that with you. And so if you actually, if you follow the, this video and the instructions today, uh, you'll be in good place. Click confirm. So now you'll see uh, that we're going through a similar update process. I'm, again, I'm going to let this roll real time so that you can see what's happening. The video of my my W1 is quite dark. I've done that deliberately so that you can hopefully better see the colours of the buttons. Uh, but what's most important is actually what's going on on the screen. Okay, right, that's it. So that's the V2 firmware update complete. And you'll see after the device restarts for the first time that it looks quite different. We've now got a burger menu on the top right hand corner. Uh, we've got the name Wolfmix W1 top left and the menu uh, looks and feels rather different. Uh, there are no, there is no project 
loaded anymore. Uh, if I if I want to open a project, I can tap the burger menu top right, select open. There are no projects on this device. As I mentioned right at the start of this video, this firmware update actually erases all of the projects that are stored on the W1. That was why it's really important that you back them up to your laptop before because we're now going to have to reinstate a project onto the W1. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go over to W Tools. I'm going to go to my projects settings. I'm going to pick the dual spin glide, uh, click this item here, and I'm going to choose uh, sync dual spin guide. You'll notice that the arrow is pointing right, suggesting that I want to sync it to the W1 controller. So now this is going to send the project back to the W1. Uh, this project has now been loaded. You'll notice also that it has a name on the top left hand corner, which was the, the project name that I selected, Dual Spin Glide, but it has a dash V2 on the end of it. And that dash V2 is important because that project has been converted for use with the V2 firmware. If you were to back this V2 project up to your laptop and then try to reinstate that onto a V1 firmware device, it would not work. So it's really important that you uh, uh, either retain the v2 names if you can uh, but also uh, if you do ever need to go back to a v1 firmware that you will need to also reinstate kind of v1 projects your original project names don't have a v1 on them they, they just don't have the v2 suffix so this uh, this project has now been uh, installed onto my w1 and if I go and if, if I attempt to open it you'll see that it's now it is now listed I'm now going to sync another project to my W1 just so you can see how you would do that with a second project. Uh, I'm going to choose Comedy Club. This is a, a setting or a project that I use for a local Comedy Club lighting setup. So again, click the Sync to Wolf Mix. You'll see that it appears on the device. It's been made the active project and it also has the V2 suffix in the name. If I tap the burger menu, choose open, you'll now see that I've got two projects and I can switch between them in the normal way. I can choose the project name, tap open and reopen one of my other projects. And that's it. So that's how you uh, prepare your W1 for an upgrade for the firmware. Uh, actually go through the firmware update process and then resync your projects to the W1 itself. The next part, I'm actually going to go backwards. I want to show you how to go back to the 1.26 firmware version. Uh, if anything goes wrong with you, if for example you have issues with particular fixtures using the V2 firmware, you may find that you need to go back. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go back to the settings, I'm going to choose download for the uh, original firmware, uh, the 1.2.6 version. Click confirm to show that I actually want to go back again. Wait for the download to complete. Again, I'm going to let this run real time so that you can see how long it actually takes. It really is only just a few seconds. Give it a few more. Right, just write the last set stage of the firmware and then the W1 will restart. Okay, here we go. So it restarts. And there we go. So we're now back to 1.2.6. If I hit load project, I tap open, you're going to see there are none here. So I'm going to have to go back to my projects on my in WTools, choose uh, the one which I wanted 
originally so this is uh this is still the original it does not have a v2 suffix so i can safely sync this one back to a v1 firmware device and then now i can go back to my menu choose projects open dual spin gliders there click open and hey presto i am back where i started at the beginning of this video there we go. So I've been through the whole process there. I hope you've picked up the subtle differences between the V1 and the V2 f projects, the firmware projects, um, uh, and the fact that you can't switch between the two. So uh, if you have got a V1 project, you can only load that onto a V1 firmware. And if you've got a saved V2 project with a V2 suffix, you, you can only load that onto a V2 firmware device. I hope that all made sense. Uh, there are plenty of Facebook groups out there uh, that can offer you support as well as obviously the official support channels uh, but if you've got any questions please do comment on this video below but uh, actually my preference would be for you to hop into one of the Facebook groups uh, and ask questions there because it's often easier to share things like videos or photo images etc and explanations of how best to tackle some of the problems you're having right I'm going to call it a day there thanks for watching hope it's been useful see you next time